Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is my video on the offensive uses of the directional scanner. I am joined by Dr. Vitok, also of EVE University. Say hello to the audience, Dr. Vitok. Are you there? Hello, it's Dr. Vitok here. I forgot to press the button. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, in my previous video, I covered the basics of the directional scanner. Namely, while you're in its space, you go down to the capacitor donut here, you click on the scanner button to the left of the capacitor donut, and that brings up the scanner window, you go to the directional scan tab, and I mentioned how the inputs on the range and the angle work. I believe I forgot to cover what the use active overview settings checkbox means, so let me cover that real quick before I get to the main part of this video. So turning off the checkbox, if I click scan, I get a list of results. All right, This entire mess of results. Uh, Warrior 2s, warp scrambling batteries, small autocannon batteries, moons, asteroid belts, planets. Uh, are there any stargates in here? No, yes, there is one Stargate within range, Stargate Fred of God. It's an entire mess. You can, t t you can click on this checkbox, use active overview settings, and run in the scan again, and you only get back certain kinds of results, which in this particular case is still a mess. But if I click on the tactical tab, or what I, what I call my tactical tab on the overview, and then click scan again, I get a much shorter list of results. Now all I see are a Noctis, a Drake, a Rattlesnake, a Wolf, a Varger, a Nighthawk, a Caracal Navy issue, and a Nemesis. Okay. Uh, if you want to know how to filter the results according to the overview, just left click the menu icon in the upper left corner of the overview, go to open overview settings, and you can change the different kinds of things that you display on the overview and therefore the different kinds of things that will be filtered for on your directional scanner. In this case, I have all the different sorts of player ships selected, but not a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, keep in mind, not all of these things can be detected by the directional scanner. For example, live NPCs will never show up on the directional scanner. So with that covered, let's go on to some examples of the offensive uses of a directional scanner. So in this case, I am trying to find Dr. Vitox Alt, who is somewhere in the solar system, uh, sitting at an asteroid belt in a Drake. Right. So if I go to my uh, pod saver overview tab, which is essentially a list of some of the major uh, celestial objects, I see that most here I am sitting at the sun. Most of the celestial objects are within 14.35 astronomical units. That stretches out to about Hardbako 10, which is at 8.1 astros. Hardbako 11, on the other hand, is too far out of directional scanner range from here. All right, but what I'm going to do first is see if I can find this drake somewhere uh, within my current directional scanner area uh, volume. So one way I could do this is I can just change the angle of the directional scan to five degrees. Right. And you know what? Let me decloak my ship so that you can actually see my ship. And I'm going to aim my camera so that my ship is in between the camera and one of those planets. And let me click scan. And I have Hardbako 7 and Hardbako 9. And you know what? Let me go back to my tactical tab so I'm actually looking for ships. Alright, so I see a Varger. That's not it. Let me try this other planet. A wolf and a Nemesis. Nope. Let me try that other planet. Let me widen the angle just a little bit to 15 degrees. No results, so there are no player ships over at Hardbako 8. Uh, 
Let's see, let's try that one. There's a Noctis and a Rattlesnake somewhere in the direction of Hardbako 3. That's not it. Let's try this other bracket in space. Nothing in the direction of Harbako 4. Let's try over here. Wait a minute. Oh, that's Harbako 6. This is Harbako 4. Uh, widen the angle just a little bit more. Nothing over there. And, of course, Hardbako 11 is too far away. Let me go back to a 360 degree. Well, there's obviously a Drake somewhere within 14.35 Astros. I just didn't find the correct direction yet. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I forgot to check Hardbako 10. Ah, yes. There it is. So if I aim my camera at Hardbako 10, all right, and set the angle to 5 degrees but maximum range, Hardbako 10 is less than 14.35 Astros away. So there is a Drake somewhere in that direction. Keep in mind, it's always possible that the Drake in question just happens to be at some safe spot in between me and Hardbako 10. Right? Instead of being at Hardbako 10, which is 8 Astros away, this Drake might be 3 Astros, 4 Astros, or 13 Astros away, just along the same line. And it would still show up in the directional scanner list. However, in the vast majority of cases, when you've got your angle set to something as narrow as 5 degrees, if you point it at a bunch of celestial objects in the distance and you're seeing a player ship in that direction, chances are the player ship is in question is near one of those celestial objects. So, let me select Hardbako 10 and warp over to it. Warp drive active. Normally I would be cloaked for this. Uh, I've just simply decloaked my ship so that you can see what I'm doing. One thing you could always do is just left click your own ship, which makes a little box on your ship, and then hit your cloaking device. Or even if you're already cloaked, you can just left click, there you go. You can left click uh, approximately on that spot on your ship, and you'll get that little box. So that gives you something to center your scan with. All right, so now here I am. I am at the warp in point of Hardbako 10. There's Hardbako 10, though that's kind of hard to see, given that the planet is just so very dark. Decloak. Left-click my ship again so I get that box back. There we go. Recloak. All right. So, I'm going to set my directional scanner to 360 degrees, and I'm going to reduce the range to about f mm, about 50 million kilometers. And the Drake is somewhere within 50 million kilometers of my position, so it is somewhere near this planet. So the next thing I'm going to do... Now, when I was scanning from the sun... I was trying to check different celestial objects by angle, so I set it to maximum range, very small angle, and just pointed my camera at different groups of celestial objects on the screen. And that's one way to do it. The other way to do this, if you suspect your target is at a, a is at an a celestial object, is to keep your angle at 360 degrees and just fiddle with the range. So, I'm looking at my everything overview, and I can see a whole bunch of moons and such, and let's see, how many asteroid belts are here? This is Harbako 10, so... Oh, it's only got two belts. Alright. Well, there's a belt 0 0.1 astros away, and there's a belt 6 million kilometers away. So, let me go back to my tactical overview tab. Let me set my range to 10 million kilometers. No, that's 1 million. Try that again. 
here we go. That's 10 million kilometers. So at 10, it has to be 10 million kilometers or closer. So if this Drake is sitting in an asteroid belt, there's only one asteroid belt that's closer than 10 million kilometers. So let's try it. So I'm going to go back to my Everything Overview tab. I'm going to find that asteroid belt. Here we go, Harbako 10, belt 1, right click, warp to within 100 kilometers. Warp drive active. And my ship is now aligning to warp. go back to my default overview tab and bingo there is Sinjeet uh, Dr. Vitox alt in a drake with a whole bunch of drones orbiting him all right so if a target is sitting at a celestial object it's very easy to find that target with a directional scanner all right, you just point your directional scanner at the different sorts of celestial objects in various directions and see what's there. Uh, if I were going to look for things like, say, star bases, I could uh, set my angle to a very narrow angle and point my camera at a moon. Well, there's only a moon there. Uh, point my camera at something else. Oh, that's much further away than 100,000 kilometers, never mind. Point it at some other moon, and that's just a moon. Point it at that triangle, that's an asteroid belt, but no ships are over there. So I can just check each uh, celestial object one at a time, and if I see any results on the directional scanner, chances are the results are at that celestial object. Now for the other offensive use of the directional scanner. Uh, Dr. Vitok, if you would be so kind as to warp to your safe spot. In warp now. Thank you. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to go to my solar system map. Because sometimes players just aren't at celestial asteroid belts or moons or other celestial objects. They could be sitting at just some random point in space. And as you can see from my solar system map, I've got lots of bookmarks for all sorts of different random points in space. So I'm going to warp to one of these, and I'm going to drop my combat probes. Notice now that I'm pretty far away from anything else in the solar system. Uh, I just clicked the tactical button to the left of my capacitor donut and created a set of concentric circles around my sh around my ship. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 astros. I'm pretty far away from anything. As a matter of fact, if I go back to max distance and angle, there's nothing on directional here. So nobody is going to see me do the following. Drop combat probes. Come to think of it, while I'm launching combat probes, I might as well cover the defensive uses of directional scanner. Uh, if I click, if I run the directional scan while I'm putting out combat probes, I can see my own combat probes on directional. All right. uh, if these were, hold on, let me go to a nearby, oh, I don't have any other nearby bookmarks. Anyway, uh, if these were somebody else's scanner probes, but they were within directional scanner range, I could see them on D-Scan whenever I clicked the scan button. That would tip me off that, hey, I think somebody might be trying to scan me down. In which case, I should probably go run and hide. Right. Which brings us to the second exercise, using the directional scanner first. Now, I could very easily... Uh, deploy my probes in the seven probe formation that I've explained in yet another video right, and start trying to scan down Sinjeet right away. But if he notices the combat probes on directional, he might decide to suddenly move to a completely different location, in which case I have to start all over again, which is where the directional scanner will come into play here as well. So first things first, I'm going to move my probes out of the way now that they're deployed. All right. 
that gets them out of the way. So if I run the directional scanner again, I can't see my own probes because my probes are much further than 14 astros away from me. So, first things first, let me try warping back to, let me try warping to this planet. Hold on. Here we go. Hardbako 11. Warp drive I'm going to see if I can figure out approximately where in the solar system Dr. Vitok has now parked his alt. Now, probes show up on the directional scanner, but the directional scanner itself is passive. You have absolutely no idea whether or not somebody might be tracking you down with directional scanner. Especially not if they're in a cloaked ship, because cloaked ships don't show up on directional scanner. So I'm here near the warp in point of Hardbako 11, but Dr. Vitok can't see me on directional because I'm cloaked. So if I run the directional scanner from here, if I go to my tactical overview tab and then click on use active overview settings and then run the directional scanner so that I'm not looking at a whole mess of junk. All right, Cyclone, Raven, Raven, Dominix, Noctis. No Drake here. All right, so he's not in this volume of space. Let me try. Uh, oh, I know. I will try Harboko 9. Warp drive active. By the way, f to keep this exercise and this video as short as possible, uh, I do know that Dr. Vitox is sitting at a safe spot rather than a celestial object. Most of the time when you're trying to do this, when you're trying to hunt down other players, they're not going to be so kind as to tell you what it is that they're doing because that's counterproductive to their own survival. Corollary to the above, don't tell other players who you don't know what you're doing because that's counterproductive to your own survival. All right. Okay, so first, uh, there's the Drake named yet another one. I'm assuming he hasn't changed the name of his Drake. Uh, Dr. Vitok, is that correct? You didn't change the name of your ship? Correct, I didn't change the name of my ship. Okay. Which, by the way, is another inconvenience that might come up when you're trying to hunt down players. They might suddenly decide to rename their ship yet again, uh, which they can always do. If I right-click my capacitor, for example, I can set name. Right now it's named Helios. I could rename it Imicus. And I've now changed the name of my ship. If I were to decloak, Dr. Vitok would see on directional a Helios named Imicus. All right, but anyway, there's the Drake in question. Now, I know he's somewhere within about 14 astronomical units of here. So now to figure out where. So just to make life easy on myself, what I'm going to do is try to narrow down the range first. So let me try... Hold on. Let me try 1 billion kilometers. Nope. Let me try 1.2 billion. Still no. Let me try 1.6 billion. Uh, still no. Let me try 1.8. There we go. So the Drake in question is somewhere between 1.6 and 1.8 billion kilometers. Let me see if I can narrow this down further. 1.7, uh, more than 1.65, but less than 1.68. All right, so somewhere a, a little bit shorter than 1.67 billion kilometers away. Uh, just to make sure I don't confuse myself, why am I using the game's built-in calculator? I like the Macintosh OS calculator better. Here we go. So 1670. Uh, I think that's 1.67 billion. Uh, 
So Dr. Vitok is somewhere approximately about 11.1, .1, maybe 11.2 astros away from me. So I have the distance now. Now I just need to figure out which direction. So what I can do... Oh, remember from my previous video that the directional scanner can take a direction either when you're looking in your immediate environment or when you're looking at the solar system map. Right, so if I use the solar system map to do this, the list of results will change depending upon the facing of the camera on the solar system map. Now, what I usually, there are different techniques for trying to use the directional scanner in circumstances like this. What I will do is first of all zoom in my camera as much as possible on the solar system map. I will then hit F11 to bring up the map browser on the right hand side of the screen. And I will set the angle to 180 degrees. And you will notice on the bottom panel here where it says Harbako solar system, I have Alright, it's not behaving correctly on the solar system map. Let's try it this way. Here we go. So if I'm looking at my in immediate environment, and I rotate the camera, this cone is also rotating with it, and it, the cone indicates the angle of the directional scanner. So I can make it very narrow, or I can make it 180, or I can make it 360, in which case this cone turns into a circle. What I'm going to do is set this to 180 degrees, I'm going to try and keep my camera pointing along the ecliptic plane, so not up or down. And what I will do is as follows. Run a scan, I see the drake. So turn a bit to the left, run the scan again, I still see the drake. Turn left, run the scan again, I still see the drake. Turn the scan left some more, run the scan, I still see the drake. Turn some more, run the scan. Wait a minute. Ah, here we go. Alright, so here on this scan, I can see the Drake, but if I turn a little bit to the left, I don't see the drake anymore. Now notice that this edge here was rotating as I did that. So here I can see it with this edge being pointed this way, but here, try that again, here I can't. So that suggests that uh, Dr. Vitox's drake is somewhere in this tiny wedge. So what I'm going to do is turn my camera to center on that direction and then adjust the angle down to say 60 degrees and run the scan. Alright, there's the drake. Drop this down to 30 degrees. Hold on, I need to get that box on my screen again. Ah, here we go. Alright, so... Dr. Vitok is somewhere within the 60 degrees in front of my camera. And if I drop it to 30 degrees, I don't see it anymore, so let me try guessing a few different directions. No... Mm, there we go. So somewhere below the ecliptic, I think... Try 15 degrees, narrow this down further. There we go. And if I just finally narrow this down to 5 degrees and look around a bit. Alright, so Dr. Vitok is somewhere 
in that direction, about 1.66 billion kilometers away from me, right? which is about 11 astros or so. How does that help? Uh, well, I'm going to need to deploy my probes now. Let me close the map browser. I'm going to need to deploy probes to find him at this point, but I now have a general idea of approximately where he is. So I'm at Hardbako 9 right now. So the celestial objects roughly in that direction are Hardbako 10 and Hardbako 11. I need to know that because when I go to the solar system map and zoom out, there's 10, there's 11. So he's somewhere approximately So he's somewhere approximately in that volume of space, somewhere over there. So if I look at the system top down, somewhere in this wedge of space, probably around here. Let's bring the probes in. There is something else that you can actually do at this point, is press F11, and on the right hand side you'll see um, four maps come up at the very bottom one, you will see uh, the angle that you're looking at as a green wedge, and uh, it's a more of a directional yeah. scan. I tried that first. Unfortunately, it's not cooperating with me, so the green wedge is not rotating with my solar system camera for some strange reason. If that were working, that's exactly what I would have done. Unfortunately, it's not. So, there you go. But anyway, uh, just to review, that's my position. That's my position, and he's somewhere on that wedge, possibly a little bit below the ecliptic, and about 11 astros away. So, if I can guess this just right... Let me start moving my probe formation into position. And gee whiz, the solar system background is also not cooperating with me. I hate the glare on that. Alright, so I'm going to put the center of the probe formation right about here, which is about 11 astros away from me. Uh, double check the angles. That is... Uh, angle's a little bit off. There we go. I'm going to drop the probes down to two astros. Collapse the formation a bit. And let's see how good my guess is. And I'm going to start analyzing. One hundred percent, right click, bookmark location, grab the probes, grab the probes, move them out of the way, analyze. And that gets the probes out of the way. I can go back to the solar system map, I can right click my in empty space, bring up my bookmarks, Drake, warp to location within 20 kilometers. Warp drive active. So as you can see, I managed to get a 100% solution on that Drake Battlecruiser in just one scan. And I was able to do that because I had a reasonable idea of approximately where that Drake was uh, before I ran the scan. The directional scanner allowed me to do that. So the directional scanner to get an, a rough idea of where the target is, and then probes to get a bookmarkable result. And yes, indeed, there is Dr. Vitox Alt. His Drake named yet another one. And at some point, I had stopped transmitting, so Dr. Vitox couldn't hear me talking into my video recording. But anyway, there's the Drake. So, those are the offensive uses of the directional scanner. I hope that clears up the 
this application of the directional scanner for you. In the meantime, thank you for watching.